On this week's edition of Urban's Playbook, we talk about playmakers. Coaches spend years of their life recruiting playmakers, so if you got them, you need to use them. And that leads to a story that changed your philosophy on the use of playmakers. A young wide receiver <laughs> coach at Notre Dame Real two young. decades ago, Urban Meyer. Yeah, Reg, my world changed in September 2000. I was a receiver coach at the University of Notre Dame. We're playing Nebraska. They were number one in America. We lose a game in a tough, tough loss uh, in overtime. We're walking up the tunnel after the game into the locker room. Like you do, all coaches go see their players. And I'm going to see David Gibbons. The team's devastated. David Gibbons is our best player. He was a wide receiver. I coached him. And it was my responsibility to take care of this player. And he's sobbing uncontrollably. I put my arm around him. And I said, hey, it's going to be OK. We'll bounce back. He said, Coach, you don't understand. I said, Dave, what's that? He said, I didn't touch the ball today. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't being selfish. It was a fact, your best right. player. From that point forward, I promised myself that was my responsibility as a coach. If I was a receiver coach or the head coach, make sure your best players touch the ball. If it's a quarterback, that's easy. Yep. They're touching the ball every snap. If it's a running back, Reg, it's easy. You know what? Turn around, hand the ball. Especially when you got players like Zeke Elliott, J.K. Dobbins, you want to hand them the football as many times as you can because that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Now it gets really complicated when your best player, like Ohio State right now, and like I had for many years, your best player is a wide receiver. You cannot count on the pass game to get the guy the ball. The coverage might change, a ball gets tipped, and you end the day without them touching the ball. So we started way back when I had Percy Harvin at Florida, we started creating ways, creative ways to get the ball. We taught him how to carry the ball, put him in the backfield. We put him in a uh, push sweep mentality. This is Braxton Miller. He was a wide receiver by this time. We put him at quarterback, and the big time has been moved. So we had to touch the ball. The next one is Paris Campbell. We flip him the ball. That's called a push sweep. He's a 4-2-40. This is against the Wolverines a couple years ago, and he hits a 75-yard touchdown. This is a couple weeks ago. Garrett Wilson, first play of the game. Same mentality. Get your best players or playmakers the ball. And that's Garrett Wilson. That's exactly what you'll see today against Indiana. Yeah, and you have to be creative. And, and really, when we're at USC, hey, listen, we're going to get him the ball. But we also <laughs> had great receivers that wanted touches, too. So you move them around formationally. Maybe you single them up backside to create those one-on-one -on -one matchups. But, Brady, you and I both know the ball. We can only feed so many Blue mouths at ball. one time. It's also on us to really manage the emotions of those guys on the sideline. Our job is to execute that game plan, <laughs> make sure we get them the football. We're not always going to be able right. to do that. So you're right. It's about giving them that pep talk, making sure they understand the next series, next half of football. I'm coming to you. You better be ready for it. Yep. Side note, those wide receivers are notoriously chirpy on the sidelines. Very much so. Looking for their touches. So how do you manage through the course of the game that you get your studs, your playmakers, enough touches? So go back to September 2000. That was the day that that following week, I would start every Saturday in the morning. It became a routine of mine. I would wake up, depending on how they played in previous games, and that week of practice, I would list the names. For example, Zeke Elliott, Curtis Samuel, Braxton Miller. This is a play sheet from 2015. You have to, if you recruit really well, you get sheets like that. <laughs> if you don't have sheets. great players, you'll have a couple. <laughs> but your objective there is you'll list the player's name, and then you list them, make sure throughout the course of the game, they touch the ball. For example, you can see here, that's a call. This is a get a two sheet. There's Curtis Samuel. Those are the runs, Reg. Mm. You can hand them the ball. The passes are isolations. I fill it out throughout the course of the game. As you get through to play number 10, or you got to make sure he touches the ball. This is the one of the famous plays in Ohio State football history. Double overtime. We put Curtis Samuel tailback to make sure he got another touch in the game. Obviously, double overtime win against the rivals. Oh, oh coach. Gosh. Yep. Turf Relief. It's hard to skip the beat. No, it's hard to skip the beat. Look like an athlete, coach. <laughs> Look like an athlete. That's a stiff athlete. <laughs> that was play 29 for number 10. That's right. And just once again, what's the objective? What's the moral of the story? Ohio State versus Indiana. Ohio State's best playmakers right now are the wide receiver. Watch for a lot of creativity today. Hand the ball to the Garris Wilsons or the Chris Olabies. Get your best players the ball. Coach, let me see that sheet real quick. All right, so you got... 14 plays for Ezekiel Elliott. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out Zeke. I'm going to put Reggie Bush. What's the number? 35. Boy. Yeah. Big three five for number five. Give it to your playmakers. Start your Saturday strong at 10 Eastern with a legendary college football lineup on the Big Noon Kickoff Show. Big Noon Kickoff on Fox. 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.